Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely life cares at work, and today we are talking about the hardest spots to hit when sharpening your edge on your knife. Now, first off, I just want to say that uh, the person that sent me these three diamond stones, thank you very much. Um, I don't want to say your name because I don't know if you want me to or not, but thank you, thank you. It also came with this little rubber mat that actually works really good. Like, if you look at this, I mean, that's awesome. So, let's get into this video. I'm going, going to show a couple different ways on how to do this because people have different equipment. But I'm going to use all diamond stones for this. Now, let me show exactly what I'm talking about. So there's actually two different areas that are usually the most problematic and I'm going to show you. So imagine this is a spider co and that's the jimping, jimping right there. So you're basically looking at this right here, right here at the heel of a lot of knives, you get an area that the grit is deeper than the rest of of the edge and basically what it is is it's just a deeper area so the rest of the edge is there and sometimes it's hard to see on the factory edge until you start sharpening it and it's deeper so what you got to do is you got to keep removing this steel on both sides until it gets down to here and you've gotten to the deepest point of where their grit was and it can be tricky sometimes because sometimes you'll get to right there and it just seems like this will not go nowhere it's like it's like you just can't get rid of it and I'm going to show you why that is, how to fix it, and also how it happened. So first off, how it happened, usually, usually um, a factory sharpens with a belt. So, and what they do is they start at one area, let me use a different knife, this one's got a decent edge on it. They start right here and then they run it across the belt as the belt is spinning. But what happens is, is they'll put it there and they're trying to hit a specific point. So this area will stay there longer than the rest of the edge. So they'll stop here. They'll put it up to it and hold it and then start running it across. Or number two is they push harder so that's why i say like with certain uh, stones or especially diamonds you, you want to be careful with pressure because you can create deeper grit marks than other spots and stuff like that and it'll be harder to get out on your next stone but they'll basically put pressure in one area and then not in another or they could possibly start at an angle right in the corner and then flatten it out. Like they'll start like this and then like that. So they'll, and it'll be a very subtle angle. They'll think they're going flat, but they start like that and they go bzz, bzz, across. Like if it was making noise and spinning, they'd start like that and then across. And that little corner makes a spot deeper. Now I'm going to show you the other area that's also hard to hit, or that also comes with a lot of issues or can come with some issues. And that is the tip. So what will happen is, is right at the tip, sometimes you'll have an area that the grit is either deeper than the rest of the edge, or what happened is, is when they were sharpening on the belt again, when they were coming off of it, they turned. So they either turned or maybe they went like this and then put too much pressure. 
by by their by turning so like say if it was like this and you're looking at the belt and the belt was spinning they let me just go like this they go across it and then when they get to this part they might angle it and what will happen is this to where one bevel if you're looking at the, the knife like this you know, and you're looking at the tip, one side will be bigger than the other. Which isn't that big of a deal. It's not a horrible thing. But the hard part is um, sometimes the grit will be deeper on one side than the other. Or it might be deeper than the rest of the edge. And a lot of companies do it. It's not just one company or anything like that. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on a knife that is finished sharpening that already has a new edge on it i'm going to show you on a knife that already has an edge on it now if you look right here at the heel you'll see that grip pattern now you see the rest of the edge is nice you know and polished and this has been used since i've sharpened it but this was there when i had done sharpening it now i could have gotten it all the way out or <clears throat> you can get it out on your next sharpening. You know, it's up to you on if you're willing to leave it there or not. I mean, that's completely up to you. A lot of times I don't care because I know it's not going to be too long before I sharpen it again. Now, also, you'll see at the tip. Do you see where that's right there? That was also left there. Now, both those areas... I was trying, here's also the other side, you can see right there. Now, if I was going to get it out on my first sharpening, you can also see the dots right there, then I want to get it out with my first stone. Let me zoom out. With my first stone. Now, because it's going to another grit, if you don't get it out on the first stone, it's you're just it's just going to be that much harder. You're just going to remove the same amount of steel to get it out. So there's no point in jumping to the next stone. Now, say if it's like so close to coming out, you can't even see it, then yeah, maybe the next stone. But usually what winds up happening is, is you don't end up getting it all the way out. And this winds up happening. Exactly what you see on this thing. Now, how do you get it out? Well, let's look. Let's pretend that this has the same issue down here by the edge. This is a very dull knife. I, I just recently sharpened it in a video, and I took it to work, and it won't even cut paper now. So, but what I would do is I'm going, and I'll show it on a couple different stones. First, we'll start with the heel. So, what I would do is I would run my heel across the stone and you want to make sure you repeat the same angle because what will happen a lot of times is you'll wind up convexing your edge trying to repeat the same angle now you can do this a few times but you don't want to do it too many times before you do the whole edge do a good swipe on the whole edge you want to marry that spot together. Otherwise, you'll be basically doing the same thing that the factory did. So, and I'm not, I'm not putting pressure on this like that because that's what will happen. Is you'll put pressure and you won't even feel like right now I'm rocking. I'm rocking like this. But just a little bit is a lot. And what will happen is then your bevel back here will get very big. So don't do that. Hold the edge flat across the stone just like you would if you were sharpening in this direction. Same thing. The only difference is you're going to hold it flat like this. Hold it just like that. Make sure your edge, you know, before the belly, the whole flat portion of the edge is touching the stone and get it sometimes you'll see people go like this and put a little pressure right there and they'll sharpen now the only time you want to do that is when you're very good 
at not rocking. Because a lot of times what happens is you'll put pressure here and you won't notice, but you're actually rocking ever so slightly like this. And then you're just getting this little part back here and you'll get it, <clears throat> but you'll wind up with a huge bevel on that side and it won't look good at all. It'll look horrible. Um, so I've done that many times and I did it because I watched people put pressure there and go like this. And then I learned like that how even though I didn't feel like I was rocking my edge, I was. So you can put pressure there, but you, you kind of want to like spread it across. I don't really recommend doing this because you can't feel the rocking. I recommend just holding it, making sure the whole edge is touching, and then go straight across. And then every few passes, do the entire edge you want to make sure you're marrying your entire edge together because remember you're removing extra steel right there in that area but what it does is it helps you get all the way to the the back or the heel of the edge instead of say going like this and you're possibly not hitting all the way to the very you know tip of the the heel of the edge so Hold it straight with the with the stone so that this entire edge is hitting right there. And then just continue and repeat, 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 whole edge, whole edge, repeat, repeat, whole edge, whole edge, repeat. And keep doing that. And then after it starts coming out and you got it pretty much all the way out, make sure you do your entire edge. Now the next part is the tip. So... Now at the tip, when you go across the stone and you get to here, so now I'm trying to get this where you can see it, going across the stone until I'm lifting to get the tip. And once I get to the tip, now you'll know right when you get to the tip if your finger's by the tip. So if you go like this, my finger's at the tip. So as soon as it hits the tip, my finger is over the top of the tip. So I can tell right now that it's touching the stone because it's directly under my finger. So I'll go like that. And then you can just continue to hit a couple passes. But just like with the heel, you want to make sure you marry the edge back together because you're gonna remove a little extra steel that you didn't from the rest of the edge if you do that. Now, another way is just when you're going across the stone and you get to the tip and your finger's over the top, you can put a little tiny bit of extra pressure, not much, right at the tip. So you go across, once you get to the tip, you're lifting your elbow, the tip's hitting, give a little bit of pressure. Not much, because you, what you don't wanna do is rock if you put pressure watch what happens to my blade so don't do that that's why it's very light pressure extra pressure you'd be surprised at how a little bit of pressure goes a very long way especially with diamonds now let's look at a couple other stones so like say if i was going to use say one of these new stones which I'm going to do a video on these stones. Supposedly they are a very, very good deal from Amazon. And I'm not sure if they work in the KME or which system. I think it's the KME they work for, but I'm not positive. But they're a nice long stone. They're uh, about, yeah, they're six inches. Looks like an inch wide by six. So let me lift you guys up just a little bit. So, if you're going to do the heel, it's the same concept. The same concept. You just got to make sure you repeat it. Now, with the tip, same concept here. When you get all the way to here, lift up. The tip's hitting right there. I'm barely putting a little pressure. Now, I could do the double scratch thing where I get to here and I go like this. But when you do that, don't put a lot of pressure. You'll damage it if you're not careful. 
thing. So let's say if I was holding my stone, it doesn't matter if I'm holding it like this or holding this one. When you're holding it, it's the same concept. If you're going to do a couple extra passes and you can do a little bit at an angle to really get the, the idea of your angle first. That was my fault. To get the idea of the angle first, then go straight. Go straight. And do a good pass. Go straight. Make sure you're not rocking though like this. Make sure the edge is flat on the stone and you got, you're repeating the same angle. Unless if you don't mind a convex edge, you want to repeat the same angle as much as possible. Now the tip, when I get to the tip, I'm going to go like that but then i'm the lightly though very lightly i'm going to get to the tip and i'm going to look at it very closely holding my same angle then i'm going to do a couple passes i don't want to do that too much without doing these passes because you don't want to uh start changing angles and everything else it's easier to just get do a couple passes than it is to do a lot so i can repeat that pass a couple times with the same angle easier than doing it and just i'm just grinding away because now i've just messed up my tip and changed a bunch of angles but let's look at it the other direction so the other direction i would pass Try to repeat as much as possible. Now, if you're using like a work sharp guided system, the beauty is, is you have your angle set. So what you can do is you can start at your angle and drag it across. Start your angle, hold it, drag it across. And then do the whole edge. Then do the whole, then do the whole edge. And then when you get to the tip, hold your angle, get to the tip, lift up till you get to the tip and do the finger trick. Now you don't have to do the double pass like that. You can just, like I said, do a little bit of pressure right when you get to the tip. And now I'm just going to put a tiny bit of pressure as it goes across the stone. Now you can do the same process with any stone. It doesn't necessarily have to be diamonds. I'm just showing different uh, little different systems that people tend to have. But when it comes to the, the plate, the plate's the, the same as, you know, a regular stone, um, whether it's an aluminum oxide, an Arkansas, whatever, ceramic, whatever. Now, sometimes what happens is, is you won't see that mark until you get to your next stone. So what will happen is, is you're sharpening and the first stone, say it's a 240 or a 300 grit, whatever your first stone is, your, you know, your lowest grit. It's so coarse that it's covering up that mark and you can't really see it once you go to your next stone say if it's a 600 or whatever your next grid is that's when it'll pop out 
and you'll see that mark like say down by the heel you'll see it and it'll be a little mark now you have the choice right there to either go back down and continue on your lowest grit or leave it it's going to be up to you now if you know you're going to be sharpening very soon you might not care you know but if you want that mark out because it's going to drive you nets then don't try to get it out with that grit or the next grit because more times than none you're going to be upset when you get to your last stone because it's not going to be gone um it's just that the finer grits just aren't aggressive enough to remove the steel you need to remove to get it so that'll be your choice though and if you do get to the polished edge or get to your high grit or whatever your finishing grit is um then i mean that'll be your choice if you want to move back down now it's not that big of a deal to leave a little spot till later um and then get it on the next sharpening but sometimes you know people get irritated with little details you know it depends on on you i don't think it's that big of a deal now another thing sometimes you can get it out with your progression it's just more times than none you're going to spend more time than you need to on your on your your finishing stones you're going to wind up spending more time on your second stone than if you would have just stayed on your first stone so there you guys go hopefully this explains some now sometimes this winds up happening in the middle of an edge because from the factory they just happen to put more pressure there you know in the middle of the edge when sharpening or you know or they turned a little bit when sharpening like they were going like this across the stone and they tilted or something and it wound up putting grit deeper than the other grit so but you basically just do the same thing and continue to work it out just stay on that first stone and work it out all right guys love you guys peace